Your internal power. The rocket's core stage, which houses the three flight computers, is now on battery power. So there is no more hold time available because there's no more margin on the batteries. So if we hold, have a hold, we have to recycle back to T minus 10 minutes and recharge those batteries. The count continues. A little bit. A note now, shortly after liftoff. One minute. Shortly after liftoff, Mission Control Houston will take control of the rocket, and my colleague, Leah Cheshire, will take over commentary. T minus 50 seconds and counting. Coming up at T minus 33 seconds, the GLS will hand off control to the ALS. This is the autonomous launch sequencer on board the command and control of the rocket. But the ALS will check, make sure there's no holds. Go Artemis. Up until T minus GLS. And we are go for ALS. <laughs> down to lift off of Orion on its maiden voyage to the moon. We are going! No like oh! Sound suppression water now flowing under the ML. And here we go. Booster Jettison and shortly thereafter. calls here at Mission Control Houston. We've still got four good engines on the core stage. Next up, we'll be looking for the service module fairing to separate. This is three 15 by 15 foot fairing panels, providing structural support, protecting the service module. Those will separate at about three minutes and 11 seconds into flight, and very shortly thereafter will be followed by the launch abort system separation. Just over three minutes into the flight of Artemis 1, now traveling over 4,060 miles per hour, 83 miles downrange. <laughs> Go around the moon now. And the launch abort system pyros have fired, separating those from Orion as well. For future crew members... 
Uh oh. Jack? Who's still coming? Who's still coming? We just heard the call for three engine press, meaning if SLS were to lose an engine at this point in the mission, we could still achieve a nominal mission. We would just have an extended main engine cutoff time. However, we still have four good engines. All at <laughs>